So I'm a little late to the show, but this is the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra, which is a horrible name in my opinion. They should have called it the EcoFlow Ultra. It doesn't even look like a Delta Pro. Why would they add that name? So anyways, this is a completely different design than their other products. You have stackable batteries down below. And then on top, we have an inverter and a solar charge controller. And unlike older EcoFlows, this one has a high voltage input with MC4 connectors. And this is a split phase inverter. So on its own, you can actually charge an EV. And the total split phase output is 7,200 watts. And the high voltage solar input can do 4,000 watts but it still has a low voltage PV input that maxes out 1200 watts if you have smaller panels. Now on most EcoFlow products, if you wanna use their expansion batteries, they have these huge cables that take up tons of space and they cause the total footprint of the system to be obnoxiously large. But on the Ultra, they actually fix this problem with these 90 degree cables, which is a massive improvement. The size of this system compared to the past Delta Pros is much smaller. With a flathead screwdriver, you can lock them into place. And to turn these batteries on, you just press the power button and then press the main power switch. Now, in my opinion, I love the design of this thing. It looks beautiful. It looks like it's from a sci-fi movie or from Halo. I just love it. Now, on the Delta Pro, the on and off buttons are all over the unit, on the front, on the back, and on the sides. On this one, everything is right here, including the USB ports. And then to turn on the inverter, you press this switch. To turn on the DC output, you have this switch. You have an input, output, and the state of charge, and how many batteries are connected. And then down here, we have some AC outlets, an RV plug, and then a generator plug. And this is where I connect my electric vehicle chargers. Then we have a 12 volt port with an Anderson power pole, the low voltage input for solar. You can select fast or slow for AC charging speed, and this is the AC input. And what I love about this thing is it has a 220 volt input. Now this is the cable it came with, but I spliced in my own 650p 240 volt plug. And now I can charge with 3000 watts. Plug it in down here. Now we have power and it's not charging. And this is one of the downsides of the Ultra. It's kind of like the Delta Pro where it runs the inverter circuit in reverse to charge up the batteries. I think they need to have a dedicated isolated battery charger so you can run both at the same time. So we're gonna turn off this inverter and now it will start charging. There we go, it's charging. Now with 240 volts, we can charge with 3000 watts. And with two batteries, it will take three hours and 49 minutes to charge. That's because each battery is six kilowatt hours in capacity. So 3000 watts, each one will take two hours. Now charging with solar, I've actually had a ground mount connected to this for the last month. And the high voltage solar input is fantastic, but the MC4s like to get stuck. So be sure to use the tool that it comes with to remove these things. If you try to use your hands, it's gonna be very difficult. Also, it's smart to have a disconnect switch for your solar array before you plug it in. And I'll have one linked down below. Now let's talk about the price of this unit because everybody complains about the Jackery Explorer's price. This actually costs more if you compare its output and its battery capacity. This has a slightly larger battery capacity. This has six kilowatt hours instead of five kilowatt hours but the inverter output and the PV input is exactly the same. But for some reason, no one's complaining about this unit. I think it's because it just looks cooler. The Jackery has a 7,200 watt split phase inverter and it can handle the same amount of solar through the high voltage input. But the EcoFlow Ultra can have a lower voltage on the high voltage input for it to start charging. So for example, in the last month, I had this connected to a ground mount array with four panels in series with an open circuit of 165 volts and this one could charge just fine with those solar panels this one only requires 80 volts to start charging but on the jackery it wouldn't charge at all it was only charging with 400 or 500 watts and it was supposed to be at 13 1400 watts so that's a huge plus for the ultra but this thing costs a lot more money it's like a thousand dollars more for one battery and the inverter also the footprint of this is larger than the jackery but if you wanna have the Jackery with expansion batteries, you're gonna have these obnoxious cables. And then you'll have to stack batteries on the side. I like this design better with the batteries down below. But it is interesting that everyone complains about the Jackery's price, but I haven't seen anyone complain about this thing's price. 
Now we're gonna charge this car directly from the EcoFlow Ultra. And this unit has already put about 100 kilowatt hours into here. I charged it quite a few times with it already. Now the Jackery has a NEMA 1450 built into it. This one does not. So we have to use a generator adapter. So we're gonna connect it to a NEMA 1450. EV charger and this one does not require a ground neutral bond to charge a Tesla and to get the inverter to work we have to turn off charging so we need to disconnect this cable and then plug this one in and then plug in the charger and it's ready to go. Now this one doesn't require a ground neutral bond but you have to use the adapter that comes with the Tesla. We're going to charge with 29 amps just like the Jackery and this car is pulling 7,000 watts. We could actually increase the current a little bit. Uh oh too much too much. Okay, that's perfect. 30 amps at 240 volts. Now in the past, electric vehicles had a lot of downsides, but the newest ones are really good. It's sad when people dismiss something at a certain point when the technology is finally starting to mature. And I just don't want people to be ignorant. So just try it out. Go test drive all this stuff. See what you really think. Now I'm not the biggest fan of the Jackery, but you have to consider the price difference here and also the size difference, the total footprint. If you're planning to buy an EcoFlow Ultra with only one battery in the inverter, you're probably better off buying the Jackery. It's $1,500 cheaper. And the only big difference is that you have one kilowatt hour less of storage, but you're saving $1,500. But the Jackery, if you want to expand it, the batteries cost more, they're $2,500. But if you buy one of these expansion batteries, they're $100 less and you get one kilowatt hour more. So if you need a large system and you really want to stack up these batteries, these will be cheaper in the end but for small systems you should probably stick with the Jackery. But the Jackery has some weird software. I notice a lot of weird behaviors if you don't turn everything off and you disconnect something. With the EcoFlow you don't have to think about it. You plug in the battery and it instantly works. And I still haven't been able to get the Jackery to connect to my Bluetooth app and I've tried everything. I even sent the company a video because they did not believe me and I was like look I've literally tried everything. It shows it on my list. I select the unit and it doesn't connect. I don't know why. With the Eco flow it actually does work. Now we're going to talk about what I dislike. First of all these things need to lock together because right now they're not. And if you stack a lot of batteries this thing is just plain dangerous. I've had problems just moving it with two batteries. And these caster wheels are made out of plastic. They need to have a heavier duty caster wheel. Now with two batteries and an inverter this is almost 300 pounds. When I have a 300 pound battery they have these types of wheels. And these are all metal with ball bearings. People need to be using these instead. And this is from the Ruxu battery. This is a little over 300 pounds but yeah this is the kind of stuff we need to be using. And if you want to use it for stationary application you can spin this and then it will put all the weight on this piece of rubber and if you have five of these batteries stacked up that's over 600 pounds even on the server rack battery cases they'll have massive wheels that are super strong so I don't know what they were thinking with this one now somebody on the Amazon reviews actually complained that the wheel broke and that this whole thing toppled apart and I believe it, just the difficulty I have moving it with two batteries is ridiculous. I had one cable on the ground over there and just to get that thing over that and not have this thing topple over, I could see it shifting every single time I try to pull it over that thing. So for stationary use, it's fine, but if you try to move it, you need to be very careful or not try to move it because I think it's plain dangerous. Now, a big complaint I've had with EcoFlows in the past is the software. And so far with this one, it actually worked really well. But the reason I did not get one of these units when it first came out is because they said the software wasn't ready and they did not want me to review it because if there was a problem they knew that I would find it. But so far this thing's been fantastic. I hooked it up to solar and it just worked. Now in my opinion I think more people would use a NEMA 1450 instead of this RV plug. Now one complaint I saw online is people said that the capacity wasn't that good. And it's actually really good. This is 12 kilowatt hours right here. I'm guessing they're trying to back up their home with their smart panel that they sell which I never got one of those either. And I'm guessing they figured out the hard way that they need more battery capacity to run their home. Now the cooling system on the back of the inverter is pretty exposed. This thing could get pretty dirty. So if you run this for a long time I would check these fins and make sure that everything's clean on this side. Especially if there's a lot of dust and it's outdoors or something. You need to keep an eye on this. Now we're going to try to connect this thing to my phone. Oh there it is. Now let's see if this one connects. The Jackery never did. And there we go. <laughs> that takes seconds. It's so easy. Now it's connecting to the network. I've never had an issue with my EcoFlows connecting so this should work just fine. 
and it's good, check it out. Not only is it functional, but it looks really good. It looks as good as the unit. They really got the aesthetics down here. Also under lab features, you can see everything that's actually going on with the inverter. And then with the app, you can turn AC always on, and that way when it charges back up with solar, it will turn the inverter on and it will just keep running forever. And they have time of use scheduled in self-powered mode. So they're really making some good improvements here. They should have done that on the EcoFlow Delta Pro. Now let's say you don't wanna back up your entire home. You could easily run some mini splits, your furnace or your refrigerator in UPS mode with this unit. And then you could charge at night when the electricity is very cheap. Or you could connect this to a permit-free ground mount array like an Integra rack. So that way you have a full system, you can run part of your home, and the installation would be pretty fast and easy. You could just throw this into your garage and run some conductors through the wall and you're pretty much good to go. Also, this can only be mounted indoors, just like the Jackery. I wish they had an outdoor rated EcoFlow. That would be really cool. Now, so far, I like the unit because of how it looks, okay? And it works really well. Everything just connects and it just works on the first try, but it is pretty dang expensive. Most people nowadays can easily connect the server rack battery to an all-in-one unit with two cables and save a ton of money over this unit. And to get this other battery, you're looking at over $7,000. And the panel is over $1,000. So we're talking $8,000 here. And for what, a 7,000 watt inverter? You could get a 6,000 XP, almost have the same output, throw two server rack batteries underneath it, and that would be under $4,000. So it's like half the price still. With this system, you have to go to EcoFlow if anything breaks and you have to buy their batteries. You can't connect any battery that you wish. And these batteries cost more than double than a server rack battery. So not for everybody, but if you have a bunch of money and you wanna buy something quickly and come straight to your door, I see the allure, but yeah, you're gonna be paying for it. And that's pretty much it for this video. I actually liked it, but very, very expensive. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.